So I'm gonna first I'm gonna like marble this together to make it look like a jade. cap this whole thing so I'm just very thin some clear here and I'm gonna apply this as a base so this wave gels ether flakes they're kind of like a iridescent flake very nice background look. I'm gonna flatten this out a little bit, give myself more shape. Later when I put clear, I'll do more shape. greens will come together to make like a almost like a marble look a lightly work I want to put clear here because I got still wet so I want to put clear in this this gives it a little more of a rock look I'm gonna cap all this later. I gotta be careful with this darker green because it's very dominant. So I wanna make sure I use less of it, more of the light green. I'm gonna pat it lightly to give me my marble look. Make sure I get the cuticle nice and sealed. So my client can decide, I just freestyle. Use, you don't need to use too much of this. I just got too much there, way too much. This thing will spread. There's a few layers of this, this, and then I'm gonna do another layer of gel marbling on top, and I'll bring the rock look together. Let's just enhance the look. Make sure I cover up the nail line. You want to not want to see that coming through. Work with a very wet bead. So you guys, this is very easy set to replicate. You want to replicate it at home when you're doing your client. But it's a few techniques here that requires you to be able to execute very well. Everything I do here will come, will make sense later. For a lot of you guys are like, oh, well, how's it gonna look? You gotta trust the process. As long as it ends up looking fire, that's all we need to worry about.
Hey, what's up from Alaska? Wow. The hardest part is probably getting the marble look around the cuticle area. You gotta be careful. You wanna make sure it looks like a marble and not too muddled. Mixing in the colors together. Nice and sealed in. So that almost finished. We've got to cap all this later. You guys can already see it coming through. How the set's gonna look like in the end. There you go, nice and thin, because we gotta cap it later with clear. Everything will come through. easy but not as easy as it looks because if you actually mess this up actually if you don't put this in if you don't do this set like nice and cohesive it actually will look like a bunch of crazy stuff so trusting the process is one thing but knowing the process is another okay guys make sure you execute the techniques well so that everything will come through you don't want to just try to wing it Practice first before you try to execute a design like this. Always. You know, on a mannequin hand. So when you actually do it on your client, you don't have to run into issues where things don't work out. There's four layers to this design to make it look right. You've probably seen a lot of this done on Instagram and Facebook. A lot of different styles where you do this. You can do this with gel polish, you can do it with powder, um, either or which one you want to decide. I kind of like doing it with powder because then I'm all like already nice and committed already. I don't have to worry about doing any gel. Only gel work I have to do is putting in the enhancement to this design. It's starting to seem like a lot of work, but actually, at the end of the day, it isn't that much work. Um, as long as you, <laughs> the uh, application process is well, well done.
Let's make sure you work with a wet bead. Marbling perfect. Way too much. It's okay. We'll take some of that out. Want to have it nice coat but we don't want it too thick either we want to kind of like a see-through look because later on our gel marble is going to bring out more change it up here and there Okay, let's finish up on the thumb and cap. I thought today's Saturday, everybody busy working. I always do the direction of my marbling um, reverse on each hand. So I don't want to um, have everything in one direction. got to save my last live because I was in a hurry and instead of saving I pressed delete oh, I feel so bad it was such a cute cute refill too shows how long it's been since I've done lives Good. Put away our powder. Now we just put everything away. Slightly clean our brush. Get rid of all the glitter. Now it's gonna hit up with clear to cap everything. cap are clear just like how we do a full set and the clear is very very wet to work with especially when we're using EMA so take your time we don't want any bubbling okay proper thickness we did everything nice and thin but I'm also gonna give myself a little bit more shaping a little more width with this so I'm sculpting it out before it was very thin you don't have to cap all chisel powder none of my powders I use have to be capped the only reason I'm capping is this design requires me to cap this is a marble encapsulation set so it requires me to cap 
but generally these powders, even with gel powders, you don't have to cap. Only powder you have to cap is you know which powder. Some certain brands require you to cap. I don't use those brands because it just takes too much time. But since I'm able to knock out, oh, thank God. So I'm able to knock out my marbling very fast, I can take up that time to cap. This would be the structure bead. Make sure I get all the cuticle area. Build my structure. Because this is a straight tip, remember, not a natural tip. So I have to build structure. I need right there. Should I polish on you? Not every nail you have to build crazy apex. Depending on the client's nails. What's your opinion on MAA primer versus not MAA primer? What's MAA primer? I don't never heard of MAA, MAA primer. What is that? What's the acronym for that for? I've heard of non acid and acid primer, but I've never heard of MAA and AA primer. Primers are more or less the same. What's that MAA? Can you can you tell me what the acronym stands for? I'm just used to non-acid or acid primer, so I don't really know what MAA stands for. Mm -hmm. Let me give myself a little bit of structure out here. pH of four. Metallic acid. I've never heard of that. Is it just another word for, um, it's probably another word for acidic or non-acidic. Um, it depends on what you want to do. If you're, if I say most of the time non-acid is the way to go because a lot of clients are, have uh, reactions to acid primer, but not everybody, so just the safest way to go. I don't really depend on the primer that much for my um, adhesion. I depend on my prep and also my ability to seal the cuticles. So the primer just helps. And pH bonds, you don't really need because that's just to dry out the natural nail bed. For when you work on natural nail beds um, uh, with gel polish or something like that. Um, when you're working with acrylic, when you rough it up, it's already dry, you know? Yes, it could probably help, you know, dehydrate it more. So the pH thing you're talking about is probably like a dehydrator, which I don't really use, and I never had a problem with adhesion, so I really depend on just my prepping, my cuticle work for my nails to stay on. Now, all these products, yes, they will help, but is it gonna be the deal breaker? Are you gonna put it on and not do proper cuticle work? Is it gonna stay on? Probably not. Um, because cuticle work is the key to that. I really don't depend on products for adhesion. That's, me as a nail tech, my skill and technique is what I depend on at the end of the day. That trumps any product. Which is not to say it doesn't really work.
Yeah, I mean, acid prime versus non acid primer is one of those things where it's not the biggest factor in the world. Um, people just use non acid primer just so in case the, the client doesn't have a reaction. Because some clients' skin are very uh, sensitive, so an acidic primer can actually cause issue. each their own. Wow, well, Saturday. Not a lot of people aren't watching lives. Probably haven't done a lot of lives in a while. And I'm getting warning signs from Facebook about music. God dang it, that's probably why. Lives getting restricted because there's music in the background. Three. Kiểu nó bật nhạc xuống đi em được không? Yeah, Facebook sent me a message right now. <laughs> There's music in the background. Good old music. May or may not have to restart the live. Yep, they're telling me I, it's gonna get shut down soon. Man, they're so anal with music. Guys, I'm going to shut this live down and restart the live because it's going to go down anyways. So I'm, I want to do it my own accord. It's a little bit too flat here. A little bit more. I don't know why Facebook is so adamant on music. Like, come on. so strict yeah you don't hear it but there's like a little um, a thing that detects the music based on the frequency so as long as my microphone picks it up they're gonna give me all these issues. Let's see if they shut me down. They just sent me a warning. Usually after the warning, they just shut it down. But they limit the exposure. So people can't watch it. Yeah, it is ridiculous. It happens all the time. All the time. Once they warn you, they limit your exposure, and then pretty much they'll just either delete the live or shut the live down. It's happened to me before. I usually play the music really low so they can't pick it up, but I guess today I forgot, and then the shop just really blasted. Yeah, marble nail. This is going to be a jade marble. Well, for those of you guys, I'm going to have to shut down the live because they're telling me it's going to be shut down in like the next few minutes. So um, I'm going to do it myself and I'm going to restart the live. So if you want to rejoin, you can rejoin. If not, maybe just let it run through. Whatever. If they shut it down, they shut it down. I was Ariana Grande. Every time she comes on on the, on the playlist, Facebook's like, ah, no, you can't have Ariana. Every other music is fine, but... Not Ari, not Ari. Pretty much the same sequence. Just capping, capping.
You. Me too. Do you guys have any soda? Yeah, why do you have it when you come in here? Huh? You hungry again? No, I said soda. Yeah, they have it. Low sugar level? Maybe. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep the live going. If it went to the shutdown, they shut it down. I don't wanna restart it. Too much work. <laughs> then I have two videos on my page. Hopefully it gets saved. I hope I can save it and then people can watch it later. I need a little bit more monomer. Finish up my capping. This is just the capping. Later on when I'm finished with drilling everything, I'm gonna do another marble on top. It's gonna be with gel polish. And it's gonna tie everything in nicely. I give it like a like a rock quartzy look. The thumb, I'm gonna have to build a little bit more structure because it's a bigger nail. So I gotta put this one, the chance when you build your apex and stuff like that. Mm. There we go, give yourself a little shape. And there, there you go, one hand down, guys. After this, a little bit of gel more. Look at that, look how nice it looks right now. Woof! Uh, I use this like ether flake. It's not a glitter. It's like a flat, clear, translucent. Mm. You can get them pretty much anywhere, but you can buy it at weirdjobshop.com in the pin link below. Got distracted there. Started to run. Clear's very hard and very easy to work with as long as you don't try to move too fast because clear capping is like one of those things where you don't want bubbles. Make sure everything stays in. Work with small beads. One of the things, one of those things I dread about work capping is I hate capping because I have to work with clear, and clear is not based up on speed; it's based up on, you know, patience. <laughs> I don't have that much patience. I want that shit to be dry right away. I work quick, so I need it to be done. But with clear, you don't have patience; it's gonna be very troublesome for you. So it's not running everywhere or it's be too thin. I gotta time it, make sure that it's gonna be the right consistency before I start moving it. So then I'm just gonna leave right there and just tap it. When I start seeing it drying up, I'll, then I'll start to blend it in. Give myself some structure there at the end, tip. You want to be as clean as possible because later you don't want to do too much work, you know? Because if your clear work, if your ca clear capping is not clean, then that's going to be a lot of work for you later.
You see, I'm building my my shape. Because my tip was way too thin, because I used the I used the little tips to cut down, and you know, if the client nail bed small, then it's gonna get more sharp at the end. So the longer you do, the less we get through it. I'm used this clear to kind of sculpt out my extra shape, and it'll be fine. It'll have that nice clear look on the side walls, and it'll, it'll match in with my whole look. You know, like different layers and dimensions. But it takes me a little bit more time because I gotta wait for this clear to dry so I can sculpt it. Because when the clear is wet, you can't really sculpt it. So it just drip. So there you go. I sculpted out my shape that I needed, that little bit that I needed to make sure it's nice and coffin. Wow, they haven't shut me down yet. Probably because I turned on the music in time. <laughs> I just hope they let me allow to save the live because usually when it happens, they won't let me save the live. I probably save it to my. Probably save it to my um. Phone and then upload on YouTube or something. This set requires a lot of work, it's in a lot of acrylic control. But if you can get this down, this is one of those sets where you can bust out any time and your clients will love it. It'd be great for pictures, you know. Show a lot of technique, a lot of ability. When the taco hits, I guarantee you guys your jaw will drop later on when I finish. See how this is, you see how this is like, like pointed? I'm gonna build it out, give it more structure. So, I do it with my clear. that it's gonna sculpt it out and bring it in Just takes a little time, but the right finesse. You can build shape and structure. Just like how you do with forms. And then I would just shape it and make it nice and crisp. Clear will always stick to your brush, no matter how good your brush is. So make sure you clean your brush really good at this. And it's important that you guys cap that cuticle area because you don't want to drill into that thin powder that we did in the base and have the marble just go away. All that work will just be for nothing. If you drill into the marble. That's why we cap marble. Because when you drill into it, you won't lose that natural marble look. It'll just look like, you know, color faded in. And you don't want to do that. Yeah, this is tedious work. That's why I hate capping. I don't know how people do it. A lot of people do this all the, all day, every day. Then use <laughs> color powder and then they cap. cap. I'm like, this takes forever. That's why I don't like 
powders that needs to, I don't, I don't, I prefer powders that require no capping. So I have to go through the whole process of working with clear because working with clear is just dreadful. Well, we're almost finished though, only two fingers left, so can't complain. The set itself is gonna be under an hour, so it'll be good. It's important that I let this dry up a little bit because I want to make that sculpt the end there. Let that dry. Take your time, trust me. Do not want to rush with clear. I see people, a lot of people rush with clear and they have their tips all thin and stuff like that. No, just take your time. Make sure you build that proper structure, okay? To be dry a little bit, it was too rainy. Let it dry a little bit. Ooh, ooh. Almost there, guys. Last but not least. I can almost make it like a ballerina look with this ballerina shape. See how this power starts getting sticky because my monomer is getting old and old and old. But I got just enough, just enough to finish off here and then actually clean my brush. I definitely need to clean my brush. Anytime you go clear, please clean your brush because you will have acrylic stuck into it. I can already tell, see that? The acrylic stuck to my brush. It's because there's acrylic in there right now. There's so much residue. Because clear is not like pigment powder. You know, it's just all acrylic. So it's really potent. Um, pick when you're using like pigment powder like you know uh, with other colors there's pigment in there so the pigment doesn't bond to the, the brush as much as the clear will there were therefore that you won't get any that much uh, residue but when you're using just clear powder like this I'll show you guys it takes a big beating that's why you gotta really really clean it so a lot of guys are having acrylic stuck in your brush it's probably from that really to be honest with you And there you guys go. So now, look at our brush. See that? 
all that acrylic just gooped up there. Now we really gotta clean this out. If we don't clean this out, that's gonna seal on up. But luckily, we've been using monomer this whole time, so monomer has kept the ending. So we just gotta push out all the excess. You can feel it. Don't you don't do it with a visual. Okay? If you ever if you ever clean your brush, you feel it. Dang, I might have to soak this brush. I had some acrylic here from the last set. So I'm gonna soak this brush a little bit. There you go. See that? It's nice and soft. You better get the acrylic right out. If you don't get this out and you leave it for like when it let it dry, because right now it's still soft. It's still gooey. You can nudge it and push it out. But when it's already set in, it's gonna be a lot more work to do that, okay? A little bit more monomer. See, this is the biggest one I have right here. This one from my last set. I didn't clean it properly. Now I gotta remove it. Luckily, it's not hardened to the fact that I can't move it. Boom. And I'm good. Clean my brush, feather my finger through, make sure everything is like that. That means that there's nothing sticking together on the bristles. The only one I had was that big chunk right there that just came out. I lost a hair, but that's the sacrifice I'm gonna get. Boom. Now get your brush wet again. Shape it how you want it. To stay and I want my brush to stay like this so it's gonna stay like that it's a little bit of a maintenance thing right there for you guys after every set you should be doing that keep your brush nice and good you know all the excess monomer because this monomer is no longer no good go in and shape let's zoom up a little bit So generally, you guys should be doing that every time. Every time you finish the set, you should be checking your brush. Now I can make my shape nice and crisp again. Generally, I'll shape it with my brush, so a few strokes here and there. And I think I'm happy with that shape. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Shaping shouldn't take you that long, to be honest with you. If you take, if you're going 30 minutes on shaping, you, you're doing too much. It means that you're possibly ruining your shape rather than actually shaping. Very minimal, even strokes. Make sure you're doing it nice and straight. I'm not gonna sit here and try to shape everything in. See that? Okay. Anytime I shape one side, I will switch to the other side and make sure I get an equivalent. I don't want to switch sides too many. I don't want to stay on one side too long because I don't want it to be wobbly. And generally. Within less than five minutes. 
ourselves some nice coffin shaped nails just like that not too bad right quick and painless hello everybody that's just joined I'm surprised Facebook hasn't taken down the live, but I guess because I turned on the music, but the live is being restricted, that's for sure. It's okay, I'm gonna save this and upload on YouTube. Actually, it's one of my favorite sets to do. So both hands shaping 10-15 minutes, I would recommend. Um, the only reason why I tell you guys not to go too over that time, because give yourself like some breathing room, because if you are gonna shape too long, you're actually gonna mess it up. So just make sure you just like, hey, you know, stop yourself and just look at the shapes. Hey, is it, do I really need to be shaping anymore in this spot? You know, yes or no, move on. You can always go back. I just don't want you guys to stay in one spot too long. It's called over filing. It's actually a very big issue with a lot of nail techs. some hand filing even up the surface area just like how I did earlier and this set you can do with different colors too it doesn't have to be green I like to do a jade set once in a while you know with Blue, purple, multicolor. I did two shades of green. See my hand finally be able to keep my surface area nice and smooth. I always recommend hand filing when it comes to long nails. Your drill bit is not going to be able to get that nice smoothness that you can get with the hand filer. You get so much surface area here with the hand filer, you know? Hmm. 
So easy. How fast it is. Less than five minutes. Once you see everything is nice and smooth, check the side profile. You're good. If it's not, just keep going. Don't put too much pressure. Because the surf when you're going up and down like this, the surface area is gonna get nice and smooth for you already. Go. See. Service area nice and smooth now. And then now we just gotta do this drill bit and go over the cuticle area and buff, and then we're gonna do our final designs. So sets like this may seem like it take you two hours, but you can do it under an hour easily. Um, as long as you get everything in proper steps, proper timing. Because a lot of this is just an application, to be honest. So See, that's far right there, it's uneven, that's why it's lighter there. So I'm just gonna keep hand filing there. You know, it was one of my followers that asked me, can you do more hand filing? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and I got really addicted to it because it's actually a lot quicker than what I was doing before. Although before I was really used to doing that e-file, but hand filing has its merits. And I definitely want to show you guys everything and all things and nails that are practical. And this keeps the shape too when you're hand filing. Sometimes when you e file and you drill in accidentally, oof. That's the worst feeling when you drill into a nice smooth surface area by accident. E file just eats in on it. This is 100, 180, I believe. Um, I'm using 100, 100, so I go quicker, but I ran out, so I'm using just a standard 100, 180. But it's not too bad because my application was nice and smooth, so finish up here and then do the cuticle work, and I'm good to go. Mm -hmm. I'm about to about finish here with the hand filing because a lot of these are already smooth. Let me 
Shake a little bit. Wow. Show the same length which they are. <clears throat> now for my favorite bit. My sharp bit. Now we do the cuticle work. We're in about a seven a nine to ten. And we don't have to do this because we already did that with the hand file. I'm going to buff that nicely. Now this is important because I need to seal in this cuticle area. I've got to be careful too because remember, there's a very thin layer of green on here. If I over file, over drill, I remove too much of it and then I'll look like a gap. That's why it's important for me to put clear on here and cap all the way up top. If I don't, I can might accidentally drill off the green. Then my marble won't look as good. This area, I can't get with a hand filer which now we'll use my drill bit to do. Make sure I get everything nice and sealed. Okay, it goes to be like that. <clears throat> <clears throat> and a lot of you guys may be afraid of using drills. There's safety bits. I provide them also on my website. Same exact bit, but in safety. For those that are ready for the sharp, just look how nice and clean that goes through. You, a lot of times people over use the safety bit and they over drill and then you see that little gap in between the cuticle and the acrylic. Look like the client needs a fill. You don't want that. This bit will prevent you from doing that because it's very sharp, so it angles down. I take on the bulk, make sure I blend everything in. Kind of blending into here. But then when I buff, everything will come together. careful this green is very sensitive because we did a very thin layer so we go to ham we're gonna drill over the we're gonna drill out the clear and once we hit that green it's gonna be a big mistake as long as I blend it into that nice surface area we have here later when we buff everything will come together into one piece and the cuticle work usually takes about five to ten minutes also depending how much uh, if you flush your cuticles well enough, if you flooded your cuticles and you have to drill a lot, then yeah, of course, you're going to spend more time. But if you flush your cuticles really well, you don't have to really do all that. Good time to have your clients relax their hand. If you're using a sharp bit, you're going right into the cuticle area. Last thing you want to do is have a stiff porcelain hand. You guys seen me post the meme. Down. 
After this is just buffing. And the final touches, some gel marbling on top. We got ourselves a nice quartz, jade quartz set. And when the top coat hits, it's when everybody's been waiting for that top coat, right? I'll probably teach this in more advanced form of this in my master class in um, Chicago. This October coming up. We, we, we're we teaching this in uh, gel, but then I'm gonna teach the acrylic version of this. That's why it's important that I'm doing these sets. I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna try to do it with a lot of different color combinations. I'll show you guys what it's like. So the students can actually learn this in class and execute it in class. It's one thing to watch it, but another thing to execute it properly anyway. I'm gonna focus on this area. Flushing the cuticle is the most important. Anytime you take out the e file, it's all about flushing the cuticles. Then you blend on these harsh corners, and it's too much bulk. You wanna blend it down. Finish up the thumb. These corners. Remember, guys, when you get used, when you get this used to this, you're gonna feel the acrylic coming away from it. You'll feel, you know, when you're gonna go into the natural nail bed, okay? Now you guys are worried, oh, what am I doing to the clients now? But you'll know, trust me. Um, yes, you're gonna run the issues where you're gonna be over drilling and you're gonna create this ring of fire around the cuticle area, but 
that's okay. I mean, you, it's a learning process. Eventually you'll start getting the feeling for it and you'll be like, okay, I need to ease up on the pressure as I work. And then you start to see the natural number as and you just feel it as you get close and then you just stop. thing I want to do is clean up underneath any excess you have here and there if you have a lot of especially with the clear always drips on the bottom I like to get earth to remove it clients don't get anything stuck in their clothes or anything like that use a buffing band of uh, sanding band if you're not really proficient at using one of these you don't want to cut the client so use a sanding band, but I need to use a sharp band just to get it right through. In and out. I do a feel when there's like a check of the clear, see like that. I from the clear earlier. This barrel is nice and rounded, so it gives you a nice curvature also when you do this. Or you can leave it under there. I get annoyed, so I don't leave it under there. I see it mentally. And that's it, guys. Let's buff and finish out the set. Remember, we hand filed earlier, 100, 100 grit. So when we buff, it's gonna be nice and soft, just like that. Put some buff underneath. Nice and smooth. Before I finish off, I'm just gonna go through and check the shape. I'm drilled, so make sure I'm just gonna run through. Real quick strokes. Crisp up the shape, but there's no more filing after this. It's gonna straight to design after this, so. I'll go straight through and just make sure everything's nice and crisp. Not filing, just running it along the line. If I can crease my shape by 2%, it's worth a few seconds that's taking me to do this. A lot of guys need to do this. If you're still struggling with shaping. You're wondering why when you start doing designs or top coat, your shape is gone. You know, sometimes when you go through and you um, drill and file and buff, all that stuff, the shape can get lost. Now we're in the final, 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 final. 
I'm gonna be using my what's that? My white gel art paint. Yeah, I got some acetone. Gotta give me one second. So now I'm gonna add some gel marbling to this. Give it like a lot of cracks and nooks and crannies, all that stuff. All that good stuff. I'm gonna clean my brushes real quick. Yeah, there's a lot of pink in there. I don't want that. Clean this. My video interrupted. Jeez. Okay. Put my chair in position. So first thing I'm gonna do is gonna put a nice matte top coat, a thin layer of matte top coat first, give myself a smooth surface area to work with. This gives me a, kind of a smooth air, surface area to do my marbling. Also a sneak peek of what's to come. Very thin, okay. I don't want it too thick. Usually if you do this, and your first time doing this, just do a few fingers just to design. And then you can do uh, just solid and all the other ones. It won't take you as long. You have these two like marble encapsulated designs. surface I can work with. I'm gonna clean this acetone up real quick. I'm gonna add some there the bottom in here. <laughs> Just leave with this gel white in here.
brush. And I'm gonna blend. A little bit of my matte top coat here. Got my palette. I'm using the matte to help me blend. Give it a smooth blend. Up and down. Tap the tail end. that we go here I'm gonna finish this hand off and then I'm gonna end the live so it keeps it short and then I'll show you guys the creatures later show you guys what the final product is the top coat which I'm trying to find my top coat where's my top coat my students they take on my top coat Second, 
Look, well, look, he has stayed all this time. The top coat is the favorite part. The amount of veins you put in is up to you. Just do a different type, each one. But it should bring out the marble, the glitter. If you tackle this, it will look good too. But let me show you guys the finished look. Let's take here, so I'll show you guys. the dimensions you can see it says it gels on top it gives like almost like a rat jaded look 